Time now for our deals report. Mergers and acquisitions rocketing back to life in the second half here. With companies looking to show growth out of the pandemic, will the trend continue? Bloomberg senior deals reporter Ed Hammond caught up a little bit earlier with Kirkland and Ellis M&A partner Daniel Wolf for his outlook. Take a listen. Coming out of a lot of other downturns and crises, I think we're seeing certain types of deals getting done. Stock consideration has certainly been a feature that we've seen at uh, levels that relative to historical norms are higher. You know, that's something you often see because people like to think about relative value as opposed to absolute value in sort of dislocated markets. I think we're also seeing some new players in the M&A market. A year ago, no one had ever even heard of what a SPAC was. And now there's probably a couple hundred SPACs out there in the market looking for deals in addition to the dozens that have already been done. Um, I think also certain industries are places where you're seeing more deals happening. Um, you know, I think that's a function of the crisis this time, which has been much more siloed and not across the whole breadth of the market. Certain industries are doing just fine. You know, you look at something like a pharma or tech, and they're just doing fine. And I think you're going to continue seeing those industries outperform in the M&A market as compared to some like travel or others that have been affected badly by the crisis. Where you're going to see, I, I think you're going to see a continued dip in those until we see a recovery with the vaccine. At a more fundamental level, is it also a sort of change in the way investors think about M&A? I mean, historically, they perhaps saw it as a highly risky activity, not something that was a core part of any, you know, corporate strategy. Whereas now, you know, you've had this broader pivot from value to growth. Investors like growthy stories. They like things that look sort of, you know, exciting and new. Is that fair? Is that, is that a sort of factor that now informs the, the way companies think about their deals? Yeah. I think you hit it on the head when you mentioned growth. Um, at the end of the day, companies are re rewarded for growth, whether it's in the stock market, whether it's in compensation programs. And even run in the run-up to COVID, and since obviously since the pandemic hit, it's been, been very hard to identify sources of organic growth, which has forced companies to go, look, if you're going to tell a growth story, you're going to go and have to look for inorganic growth. And clearly M&A is the fastest way to show inorganic growth. And as long as companies are going to be rewarded for showing that growth, I think M&A is going to be a key part of the playbook that boards and management teams are going to look at in order to continue feeding that growth story, which, as you said, the stock market investors are looking to see too. Uh, COVID or not, we are getting a new administration in 2021. What are your clients telling you about that? It's obviously something that's uh, front and center in the discussion. I think uh, when you look back at September and October, when the polls were showing the prospect of a blue wave, I think there was a lot more discussion about how the new administration and some of their policies in the regulatory front, on the tax front, were going to significantly impact M&A activity. I think almost since the election, there's been a bit of a sigh of relief. And you know, I say that somewhat ir irrespective of what happens in Georgia. I think the divided government or close to divided government is going to put significant constraints on what the new administration can do. And I think it's hard to see in any specific area where the new administration coming in is going to be a significant damper on what is otherwise a pretty active environment for m and what about the approach to regulation from that new administration? Because obviously one of the, the factors under Trump that we all got to sort of know best was this, you know, regulation by tweet. Uh, presumably that's something that companies are, are I don't know, relieved is, uh, is no longer going to be part of the, the process. I, I, companies are going to be relieved that you don't have to wake up every morning, whether it's something that's going on, whether you're closing a factory, whether you're doing a deal, which is going to involve job cuts, about worrying about being eviscerated from a tweet from the White House, um, you know, whether it's merited or not. And I think a return to norms in the regulatory environment is probably something that we're expecting to see and I think is going to be, again, something that's welcome in the corporate community. Whether it's in the realm of CFIUS, you know, it's not going to be a tweet on the way to the helicopter on a Friday afternoon that's going to tell us what's going on with, uh, with ByteDance and TikTok. And instead, you're going to probably see a return to normal pathways of evaluating uh, the regulatory review of deals.